Okay, um, I finally had some time to make the video, I promise, that would just explain a little bit more about mosaic and regulative, regulative uh, development. And just um, to be clear, we started off with preformation, um, and the reason was because um, when people looked at sperm in a under a microscope they they thought they saw what looked like you know little shadows that that appeared to be a little homunculus and they thought about preformation as the way development occurred and this was because they were limited in what they could look at and how clearly they could look at it and so that was the uh, assumption they made once the cell theory came along and it was uh, seen that cells arise through the division of pre-existing cells and so cells give rise to other cells um, you could think of development in a different way as uh, a series of cell divisions with those uh, you know different subsets of the cells becoming different from each other because of course not all your cells are the same you've got all different functions and so people were were trying to think about you know, with very limited tools and, and probably at the time not a lot of detailed understanding of genetics or gene expression or even chemical signaling and that sort of thing. Uh, and so the theories that are described are quite general and vague because there wasn't much known in detail. Um, and they were just theories. So one theory said mosaic development is how it happens and there was a little bit of evidence that suggested that. Um, and then there was another theory that said no regulative development is the correct one and here's the evidence and and as it turns out almost all the development that we study is a combination of these two you can see aspects of it that look like mosaic development um, and some aspects that look more like regulation and so neither one of them is correct or incorrect it's just that each model was based on some limited data and so um, there was some uh, discussion about that essentially um, so just the idea of um, the idea of mosaic development um, was basically that um, okay you've got a set of determinants or factors you didn't know what those were but somehow they promote certain cell fates right um, and they're found in the nucleus so when uh, that first division occurs um, the, the nuclear determinants, somehow they're not evenly distributed, so the nuclei that result from that first division only get a subset of what determinants were present in that original cell. Um, and then subsequent division partitions it even more. So the, it's all about partitioning. You've got these determinants, you might even think of them as somehow fixed uh, inside the nucleus um, as Weissman, Weissman uh, first visualized them and then as the cell divides um, more and more and the nucleus of course is dividing along with the cell then uh, these stay fixed to their particular bit of membrane which can only go into um, you know a subset of daughter cells and the idea is that you then end up this is a very oversimplified diagram but suppose there were only four you'd have to have many more because there's many more types of cells um, but then you would have uh, this embryo and um, one cell would be specified to form um, maybe the ventral anterior structures and this one would be specified to form uh, the vent uh, ventral dorsal, sorry, the anterior dorsal, uh, posterior dorsal, and posterior ventral. And then as they, div you know, divided more and more, you'd have a subset of these that was going to form, say, the germline, and a subset that was going to form, say, muscles and uh, nerve cells and all that sort of thing. So this was the idea. And Wilhelm Ruh uh, did have some uh, apparent evidence. He uh, observe frog development. Frogs were great for studying because the eggs are quite large. You can see them with your naked eye. You only need a magnifying glass really to work uh, on, on observing them carefully. Um, and he took a red hot needle and destroyed one of the cells which he still left attached um, because it was really difficult to try to detach this without just destroying the whole embryo. Uh, and when that happened he saw the um, the development of the remaining cell into um, up to oops up to 
um, the, the neurulation stage. So the neural tubes start to develop. It didn't pass beyond that. We now know that even though this tissue is has been killed and it's not dividing and so on, there were still proteins, RNAs and so on that provided some information to the, you know, the, the living tissue attached to it so that it had some sense, sense. It had some sort of information provided about what it was supposed to do uh, on its side. Okay. Um, now, uh, we've seen aspects of um, mosaic uh, type development just um, recently in lecture. Um, this is a very poor diagram, um, but this is um, a, a fly uh, egg just post fertilization, and you have a localized determinant. It's in the cytoplasm, but nonetheless, it's localized to the anterior end. It's been placed in there, uh, essentially glued to the cortex uh, up at the anterior end of the embryo by the mother, and that's bicoid, right? Uh, and then we have nanos uh, localized down in the posterior, glued to the, the posterior. Now, we're not dividing the cells, but this is mosaic development because um, the, this uh, protein gets translated and placed into just the nuclei in the anterior end, um, and nanos uh, protein is found just in the posterior end of the embryo. And both of these are responsible for patterning the embryo sort of anterior to posterior uh, with their different uh, gradients. And so all along uh, this embryo, there are different positional fates based on the relative proportions of bicoid um, and nanos. So the the signaling that takes place is regulative, but the positioning of these, the, um, the unequal partitioning of them is kind of mosaic. So you can see how um, the, um, the development is a combination of the two. And just um, for your uh, interest, um, Spemann, uh, famous Spemann of the Spemann organizer, uh, did, uh, did work with um, frog embryos later on in development, and he used uh, a little hair, a very fine hair, and he used it to surround and pinch off and separate the two um, single cells that form uh, after the first division of a frog embryo, and he was able to develop two normal tadpoles. So there's a d difference uh, between these two in that signaling information was still present here to, to dictate what this half of the embryo was going to do. But, but frog embryos, too, in the early stages, so long as you divide them in the right way, and we'll talk about this when we talk about frog development, um, you can get two fully formed and perfectly normal embryos. And this is what regulative development is. Regulative development is about um, epigenesis, which is the formation of new structures de novo, new, newly, um, based on signaling, communication, information provided from um, cells, negotiation between cells. Uh, you have a big whack of cells and they're going to form a certain structure. You, you remove a few of the cells that's supposed to form part of the nervous system. The rest of the cells continue to signal to each other and reorganize in order to form the missing structure or the structure that would have been missing. If development was only mosaic, we would not be able to replace that structure. But because there are regulative aspects, all the signaling that goes on and so on, um, then you can get situations like this where you've only got half of the embryo technically, and yet it can just reorganize and, and produce a fully formed normal um, tadpole. And so that, that just brings us to this. This is um, a question that I think I put on the uh, tutorial assignment for the first week. Um, and it just shows a fertilized cell. It shows the two cell stage, the four cell stage, and the eight cell stage. And the question says, if you carefully separate the two cell uh, stage uh, cells and the four cell stage ones, each one of these can form uh, a normal embryo. However, after that third cell division, you can't anymore. 
And what would the reason be? Okay. Um, and so if you imagine some kind of determinant that's present in, in the top part, say this is the dorsal side of the embryo, the first uh, cell division, both cells have it. Okay. The second cell division, both cells have it, plus they have whatever is elsewhere in the cells, right? Um, so these are totipotent because they contain everything that is needed uh, to build a fully formed embryo. So the word totipotent was important in the answer to that question. And this is the kind of evidence we would use to say that that development is a regulative process because you take away a, a cell or three cells and you still have enough information to divide and um, specify different fates and so on in the cells that follow, right? Um, but in the eight cell stage, um, it's an asymmetric cell division. First of all, it's different in size. So you've got smaller cells on top and bigger cells on the bottom. Uh, but also if you imagine that there was some sort of, you know, dorsal specific, say, uh, protein in the, in the top parts of these, now only the cells on top have the dorsal part, the information to provide that part of the embryo, and the ones on the bottom have all the information for the ventral side, but not for the dorsal side. These cells are multipotent. They can still form lots of different kinds of tissues, but they are limited. They can no longer form all the structures. So in answering these questions, you would talk about these cell divisions being equivalent and the cells being totipotent, and therefore through regulative processes, they would be able to form a complete embryo, and that this stage, the cells are not totipotent anymore. You've had an asymmetric cell division, and now they don't contain uh, all the same determinants or information that is needed to produce a complete embryo. And this is a nice example of how there are both mosaic aspects, these localized, usually cytoplasmic, not, not generally nuclear, but when we see evidence of this, it's almost always in the cytoplasm. Um, but nonetheless, it's like the mosaic development because it's not equally partitioned and therefore these cells have now a limitation on their cell fate. Um, and I think that's enough. That's quite a bit longer than I intended. Um, hopefully it's clear. If you still have questions, do uh, feel free to email and ask or talk to your TA.